Well, the Mini Miglia series is part of the Mini Sevens Club and they are currently celebrating their 50th anniversary. Their season, however, 47 seasons deep and enjoying every minute of it. Now, Shane Deegan has won seven out of the eight races, so he is certainly looking strong for the championship. And it's Shane Deegan who is going to line up from pole position. He shares the front row with Rupert Deeth, then row two. The black car of Aaron Smith and the pink and blue entry of Damon Astin. Row three, Robert Howard and Dan Wheeler. Then James Coulson and Sam Summerhays on row four. Tristan Knight and Mark Sims completing the top ten. Watch the progress of Kane Astin from the very back of the grid. So the cars coming into formation now two by two standing start here of course the brands hatch indie circuit and the indie circuit always lends itself perfectly to excellent racing from the dunlop mini milia challenge this one of the perennial categories of mini racing extremely popular and also extremely specialized as well these drivers are at the very top of their game a couple of gaps a little bit further down the grid but Aston rolls into place now, so we get the green flag from the marshal, the rear of the field, eyes to the gantry time, waiting for the signal to get going. 20 minutes ahead of us here at Brands Hatch, as they are held for a bit of a period, waiting to go. Now they're off, and it's a great start from pole position from Shane Deegan. Also well away is Damon Aston, and Aston looking to try and jump the silver car, Rupert Deeth, as they head in towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. They swing down through the right-hander, and immediately start climbing up Halewood Hill towards Druids. Field fanning out behind, but Deegan already trying to stretch his legs at the front of the pack. Everybody cleanly through. It's not been a brilliant start for Aaron Smith, has it? He's dropped some way down the field. May have picked up some sort of mechanical issue. As others jostling for position, Tristan Knight just holding place through Graham Hill Bend. Oh, and a problem behind. Somebody has gone around. Should have really joined him exit of Graham Hill Bend. Possibly Robert Howard as the rest of them swing through Surtees and then pick up pace coming out of Clearways and Clark Curve onto the Brabham straight to complete the lap. And even in these mini millias you don't get a second's rest here around Brands Hatch. Swing to Paddock Hill Bend they come swooping downhill great scrap beginning to form up already Tristan Knight in the middle of it as Shane Deegan tries to break away then we've got Rupert D and then Aston disputing second place Dan Wheeler in fourth Tristan Knight just about to be demoted or is he that's Dave Drew who's made an excellent start in the white cart but Drew left to the outside track through Graham Hill Bend he might look for a brief switch back along the Cooper straight what doing Millias around the circuit. Average lap speed of just shy of 80 miles an hour. Gives an indication of the sort of performance the drivers have got at their disposal. So the fight for second along the Brabham Strait. Now, Damon Aston doesn't seem to be quite close enough here to Rupert Deeth. There's about two car lengths between the pair of them as they tip down hill through Paddock Hill Bend now. Almost up onto three wheels there for Deeth. So he picks up the throttle, climbing up towards Druids into the hairpin. Ready there, stretching well clear of Dan Wheeler in fourth place. Wheeler's just broken away as well from the group of cars. Oh, that's a nice battle, still headed by Tristan Knight, but he's really happy to get his elbows out. Sam Summerhays also looking to join in the queue now behind Dave Drew. And also making very good progress for the back of the grid is Kane Astin. He's joined into that group as well. Knight is going to have a very long 20 minutes, one would suspect, as Astin kicks the car sideways. He's going to try and look to get the run on James Coulson, who is the penultimate car in the train, as they head on to the Brabham Strait. Dave Drew's also got a good run here on Tristan Knight, but Knight hugs the inside of the road. He's going to make Dave Drew do this the hard way. Drew draws the outside, but Knight is perfectly positioned, so nothing doing. But now Drew might get the overlap coming up the inside towards Druids, and he should be able to sneak through. Sam Summerhays, meanwhile, defends from James Coulson. As Drew looks to finally make that move stick into Graham Hill Bend. 
Coulson still pressurises Summer Hayes, but Coulson slow out of Graham Hillbenders as a result. And Kane Astin should slip through here en route to Surtees. Indeed, he does. It's the white car of Kane Astin. Shins to the inside. His next target is Sam Summerhays. And of course, as they are all busy battling, it is allowing Dan Wheeler to escape somewhat in fourth place in the leading trio. Well clear, Shane Deegan remains the race leader and is in pretty comfortable command of proceedings. On towards Paddock Hill Bend once more. Coulson looking to try and fight back on Kane Astin. While Dave Drew has set off in pursuit down with him, doing a very good job, in fact, of closing that gap down. So we might yet see this train starting to form for fourth place because an element of racing, of course, in the Dunlop Mingamilia Challenge is using the toe, using the tactics. Meanwhile, Jim Burrows has got Bob Humphreys right behind him. They're battling a little bit lower down the order. Returning to the fight for second place, then, and it remains Rupert Deeth who is clear of Damon Astin. And Astin, for all of his effort, and you can see the car squirming around on the brakes, still hasn't really been able to chase down Rupert D, has he? So that is going to be a challenge for Astin over the remainder of the race. Meanwhile, Dan Wheeler has been caught now. He's been caught very quickly by Dave Drew. So the fight for fourth is as close as we've seen so far in the race. Then we've got this gap back to Tristan Knight, who's suddenly have a cork in the bottle. A good first lap for Knight has given him a great track position, but he's maybe not got the race pace. So the fight for fourth, two cars almost as one as they accelerate out of Clark Curve onto the Bradham Straight on towards Paddock Hill Bend. Meanwhile, Sam Summerhays looks to line up the move on Tristan Knight and he gets his nose in front and Summerhays gains the place. And Kane Astin might also gain some ground here. Astin looks to the outside, will then try to tighten through Paddock, draw alongside up to Druid. And he's going to be thwarted here somewhat by Summerhays having a little bit of a wobble as well. As he came out of Paddock. And so they're all bunching up on each other. They stay as they were. Astin again, you get the sense he's got the pace. But can he get the track position, particularly with the second of the blue cars, James Coulson bobbing and weaving behind his tail into Surtees. He just rides the curve, pushes the mini as hard as he dares. Likewise for Dan Wheeler, he has got Dave Drew asking all the right questions. Long the Brabham straight. Panic Hill Bend arriving very, very quickly for this group of cars. Still not yet at half race distance, so they've got plenty of time to sort this out. Well, Dave Drew just probing Wheeler as he climbs up to Druids. Then thinks about launching a bit to the outside line. The car snaps away from him. And the reason why he's pushing, you can see, is that Sam Summerhays working with that group behind is slowly bringing the gap down to Dan Wheeler and as soon as Dave Drew's mirrors are filled with the rest of the train that makes his pursuit of Wheeler that little bit harder. So for Dave Drew he knows he's probably got a little or so to try and make this move where he's got the benefit of being able to try something without the risk of losing a the position. Thereafter it becomes a lot more tactical. It means that Drew hugs the inside line at clearways, tries to get every single ounce of pace as he comes out of Clark Curve down the Brabham Strait, but Summerhays already in Drew's tail, and Sam Summerhays looks to the outside of Dave Drew as they get on the brakes for Paddock. Again, Drew just moves the car around, squirms on the brakes, holds position. Again, quick on the exit of the Paddock, looks to challenge up to Druids. All the way through for Dave Drew, but this train of cars. Six strong, all fighting over fourth place. Shane Deegan continues to be the race leader from Rupert Teeth and Damon Astin. That order relatively well set. The rest of it certainly isn't. As they turn into Surtees once more, these laps being reeled off with dizzying rapidity. 54.8 is the best. It's been set by Shane Deegan. Problems behind, that's Jim Burrows. Got the sideways moment up at Druids. 
pardon me. Whoa, a challenge from Aston. He tried to look to the inside of Tristan Knight. Knight, though, holds his line as Dave Drew now pulls the pin. He gets the move done on Dan Wheeler. Wheeler hesitating coming out of Paddock Hill Bend. Dave Drew slipping through. Payne Aston also trying to overtake half the group around the outside of the Druids, but he's been able to make the move on Tristan Knight. Attempted to do exactly the same to Sam Summerhays, but he couldn't quite pull it off. So now that Dave Drew is into fourth, will he be able to rob clear? Meanwhile, Knight looks to fight back to the inside of Kane Aston into Surtees and actually pulls the move on. It's a good move from Tristan Knight. He still has to regroup, replot. As James Coulson also looking to join in and challenge. They've also got Mark Sims tucked up behind them as well. This group of cars, Hurtles on the ground straight. They're busy fighting for fifth. Here is the race leader, Shane Deegan. Deegan, well clear of Rupert Deeth. Deeth just beginning to buy himself a little bit of leeway over Damon Aston. Meanwhile, Sam Summerhays challenges the outside down. Wheeler into Drew. It's all a little bit of contact between them. And it's Wheeler who loses that. He bumps on the suspension. Tristan Knight's going to get back past him. Kane Astin thinking about it. Couldn't quite do it. And so now we've got this sprint along the Cooper straight into Surtees. Swinging in two clearways. And this is Mini Mini Racing at its very, very best. This group of cars all running in close contention with each other, taking advantage of the slipstream, thinking several corners ahead. And that's really the, the key. The laps are so quick here on the brand section. You have to plot your move almost a lap before you pull it off. Start to position your car appropriately. But it's through Pallet Kill Ben where Dan Wheeler's just been a little bit hesitant. And again, he doesn't come out quite as quickly as Kane Aston. Gives Aston the chance to challenge around Druid. Great move from Aston. He saw the opportunity. He's going to seal it. He hopes into Graham Hill Bend. Wheeler tries to shut the door. Kane Aston looks to pry it open. That's actually very well defended from Dan Wheeler. It's not done just yet because he was a little bit offline through Graham Hill Bend. That's a necessity. But it does mean he wasn't quite as quick onto the Cooper straight. Well, Tristan Knight coming back at Sam Summerhays. This battle ebbing and flowing. James Coulson has been dispatched from the back of it. There's the pace just starting to wind up as we head towards the second half of the race. And Aston, you can sense his frustration. He's right there in terms of pace. He's got this queue of cars to fight his way past. And now that Dave Drew in fourth is easing away from Sam Summerhays, it's ever more frustrating again. Aston looks at the outside track at Druids. Again, he gets his nose in front. And this time, you could say decisively, because he pulls it off, as Tristan Knight also able to elevate himself past Sam Summerhays. But then Aston runs wide at Graham Hill Bend. Dan Wheeler will look to retaliate with immediate effect. And he is successfully getting through. They are now joined by Mark Sims. Sims having found his way past James Coulson. In the blink of an eye, the positions all switch and swap around. This is the absolute beauty of Emilia Racing. These cars so evenly matched. All it takes is one blink, one hesitation, and suddenly everything starts to change. Coulson looks the inside of Sims, regains the place. That was late on the brakes from James Coulson. And Mark Sims, I think, we thought things too with that. I'll just let him through. Meanwhile, a little bit of trim hanging off down Wheeler's car. It's probably from the contact a few moments ago. So Kane Astin, about the sixth lap in succession, tries to find his way past down Wheeler. Wheeler, though, proving to be a opponent for the time being. Doing for him as. Sims and Coulson trying to stay with them. Meanwhile, the fight for second has rejoined once more. Shane Deegan, our race leader, romping clear. And amongst the traffic then, we've got Rupert D from Damon Aston. And this has been really the story of this battle, is that Aston, with the toe, can close up to Rupert D. They just can't probe through the corners. The gap starts to open up between them once more. A pair of them swinging into Graham Hill Bend. Meanwhile, the fight arrives into Druids. It's a three-way wide fight. 
as they head out of the hairpin. Sam Summerhays doesn't really know where to place his car as Dow Wheeler gets a run to the inside of Tristan Knight and goes through. There's a gap there that Cade Aston tries to follow through and he can't quite do it. And he slides sideways. He's going to give James Coulson now the chance to join in as well. So some absolutely fantastic dicing. Aston looks to the inside of Knight. Wheeler looks to challenge Sam Summerhays and Summer Hayes punches that hole in the air along the Brabham straight. The entire left-hand side trim of Dan Wheeler's car is in the process of making a bid for freedom as Aston has a little bit of a snap on the brakes. Wheeler looks inside Sam, Summer Hayes coming out of Paddock Hill Bend. He's going to go through. Tristan Knight may also make this move stick. He can't quite do it. It opens the door ever so slightly for Kane Aston, who goes around the outside of Knight as Knight attacks Summer Hayes. Gave Aston the chance to carry this pace out of Druid. So Kane Aston gains the position. They're all still bottled up behind Dan Wheeler in this fight for fifth. Quartet Shane Deegan, Rupert Teeth, Damon Aston, and Dave Drew. Well, that is relatively settled. He's only got time probably for three or four more laps as Aston looks to try and line up the move here on Sam Summerhays. This for sixth place. Kane Aston looks to challenge to the outside of the Paddock Hill Bend, will then tighten through the right-hander. Allows him to close on Summerhays as they climb up towards Druids. Aston draws alongside Summerhays and in fact goes past him. That's a great move from Kane Aston because signpost that through Paddock and Summer Hayes defended to the inside line. Aston, though, asking a little bit too much of the car through Graham Hill Bend. That will give Summer Hayes maybe the chance to try and poke back to the inside along the Cooper Strait. And Summer Hayes draws alongside. Aston slams the door shut, swoops through the left hander, and then keeps it tight into the right at Clearways. Then we'll accelerate on out of Clark Curve. This is getting fairly deep into proceedings. And Summer Hayes is going to have too many opportunities now to try and fight back and reclaim that sixth place from Kane Astin. For Astin, his next target is down Wheeler, but Wheeler may be a little bit too far up the road. Wheeler, as you can see, one of the pieces of trip has now really detached itself. Let's go to a Marshall Souvenir collection. The other is very close to so doing. Meanwhile, James Coulson and Mark Sims continuing their tussle over ninth and 10th place. It's been a great race long battle between the pair of them. And it's now currently Sims who has just about put his nose in front in two thirties towards Clearways. Here is Shane Deegan. I've seen an awful lot of Deegan, but he has been soft in the case so far in 2016, being the dominant performer. And tries to close up on to Dan Wheeler. Can he wrestle sixth place, fifth place away late on? Can some, Sam Summerhays reclaim that sixth position? That is the question as they run downhill through the bottom of Cannon Kill Bend, then climb up towards Druids. Tristan Knight has been in the thick of the action throughout the course of the race. They've got a little bit of traffic as well. That's Bob Humphreys who is caught in the middle there as Wheeler and Aston go either side of him. But to no change in the order, thankfully. There's Drew in fourth, Wheeler in fifth, Aston now right with him in sixth. He's brought Sam Summerhays with him for company as well. As the group of cars slide their way into clearways, then out of Clark Curve along the Brabham Strait. Towards Paddock Hill Bend once more, and it's Summerhays who's got the benefit of the toe here behind Kane Aston looks to the outside track alongside Aston but he can't find a way through and Aston has been formidable throughout Paddock Hill Bend through the course of the race this time round being no exception to that so the order remains very much as it was through Druids down towards the left hander at Graham Hill Bend the race clock ticking ever steadily downwards Aston find something 
in the latter stage of the race. He's not going to be close enough to challenge down Wheeler through Surtees and Clearways. Meanwhile, Shane Deegan marches onward. Deegan's just been in perfect control of the race. Aston trying to line up something on down Wheeler. And Wheeler, being prodded along here, is now into the toe behind Dave Drew. So there could be a little bit more here for Dan Wheeler. But for Shane Deegan, it's now the run through to the flag. He converted pole position and thereafter has been unheaded as he swings through clearways for the final time of asking. Accelerates out a Clark curve. He could pretty much coast home from here. His lead is just shy of 10 seconds as Deegan wiggles around. He celebrates victory in the Dunlop Mini Media Challenge at the Brands Hatch Mini Festival. Second place will go the way of Rupert D from Damon Astin, but it's all about fighting the ball, which is going to go right through to the flag. Dave Drew seems to have just enough in hand, but Dan Wheeler might be under threat here from Kane Astin. Astin gets the run as they climb ever so slightly out of Clark curve along the Brabham Strait, but fourth place is secured for Drew. Fifth for Wheeler and Kane Astin completes the top six. So an excellent race claimed by Shane Deegan from Rupert Deeth and Damon Astin. Shane, well, congratulations. As they were saying, normal service resumed and back on the top spot. Yeah, yeah, another race win. That's eight out of ten now, so um, the season is going fantastic. We had a bit of an um, incident yesterday at Turn 2 at Druids, but we put that behind us. Looked in today and controlled the race. It was a difficult race. There was a halfway round, someone blew up, and I think I was the first one round, so I was the first one on the oil. It's just difficult to see where it was. The car was sliding all over the place, but I think it's the same for everyone. So after that, it's, the lap times were a lot slower. It's just about taking the car home and being careful. Rupert bringing home second place. You had a bit of company, but it was a nice, easy ride. Yeah, no, good race. Um, Shane just went away and uh, I had Damon hot on my heels. And um, I know I thought any time he's going to be making a move because he's got a um, slightly bigger engine than what we run. He's got a 1380 and he also has got um, the limited slip diff. And I thought he'll have me round paddock. He'll get on the inside of me and up towards Druids. He'll have me. And, I, and uh, I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for him. And then when the oil went down, I started taking a wider line and I see I got away from it at one point and then um, it, we uh, came into paddock and um, luckily for me there's a, there's a back marker there and I've, he got in the way of Damon so that gave me a little bit more room to breathe and uh, yeah, they brought it home in second. Damon, well a third place finish, there's a lot of action behind you but you managed to stay clear of it. Yeah definitely, it was, it was really interesting, like say when, what Rupert just said, when the oil went down it was um, because I run a slip diff, my wheels obviously rotate slightly different but uh, yeah it grips and then it throws me off one way throws me off the other way we caught up with the back marker um, which caused a bit of a problem for me but uh, yeah I was looking to get Rupert on the last couple of laps that was my plan my game plan was last couple of laps either here or down there down at the end there but yeah no very enjoyable really enjoyable